Okay, so to do that, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to come down here and paste it below. But I'm going to add the A at the end of it because it's any anchor inside of those. And we'll go ahead again and we're going to say, I'm just going to copy from here so I don't have to type it, the text decoration and the color. So we'll start with that. And then also the other thing is that I want to tell it to be a display of block just like we did up above, because again, I want that A to be like a balloon and fill up the list item um, so that it, the whole list item becomes clickable. Um, and that means that I also need to give it a height then. I need to be explicit and I need to tell it to be 100%. And then I also want to go ahead and I want to, uh, I, I could give it a width and you know tell it to be 100% as well. So let's just try that and say 100%. And let's just see what happens here. Okay, and let's hit refresh on this page. Okay, and now at least we've got some white links so we can actually see them. And you can see that they're spacing out properly and so forth. Now, one of the things you might notice is that this is going right up to the left edge. That's because I didn't tell the list item to be text align center. So let's go ahead and fix that. Text align center. We'll save that and come back over here, hit refresh. And you see they bump over and now they look like they've got, you know, good, they're good button sizes, okay? So uh, so now we've got that going for us. Um, some of the things that you might look at is that if we look at the original, this color's not right. Also, we don't have hover states like this one does. So we can go and we can deal with trying to get some of those things implemented. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at this H1 and you see that here's the A, and right now what we have is a color, a background color of white. But if you look at the, the one that we're basing it off of, we have a blue E and an orange R. So that means that we have to do something kind of tricky and special. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, if you look over here in the HTML, um, and you don't have to do this, but I just wanna show you something that is possible okay so we've got this a and we have e dot r dot okay well what we need to be able to do is style this e independently of the r so that means that I'm gonna put what's called a span tag around the e and I'll, I'll, actually it's gonna be around the e and its dot so I'm gonna put it right there and then we're gonna have another span tag around the R as well, so let's do that. And I'll move the ending span tag to the end. Okay, so now what we have is span, and it has the letter E in a period, and then it has our end span. And then next to that is another span with an R inside of it, and then the end span. It might be easier to see just really quickly if we uh, jump out of split view just for a moment and then you can see it in a linear fashion like this and I like to keep all of this run together so um, anyway uh, so there's that and then let's let's go back into split view now we need to write a rule for it that's really specific so I want you to notice here we have this specific rule which is any A inside of an H1 inside of the top nav and it has a color of white and so right now we're getting our link color from that but we want to um, we want to not just override this we can actually get rid of this so I'm gonna put a couple of comment marks here and then that way I won't forget to remove it um, I'm just gonna comment it out for right now but what I want to do is I want to sort of copy this and use it as the beginning of my next rule so I've got the same rule about the, all the A's that are inside of the H1's, but now I want to create something where I'm saying that any span whose ID happens to be the letter E is going to get a certain kind of rule. And so what you're seeing here is that the span whose ID is E, which is this one, okay, so this E that's inside of it is going to get treated that way. So the span whose ID is E inside of an anchor tag inside of an H1, which is inside of the nav top. So that's the way to read the, the, uh, the ancestry of this rule, um, is going to get a certain color. And uh, I've already specified a color. OK, 
okay, which is this, and this I could put a little comment out here that reminds me that this is a light blue, so I don't forget. And uh, actually, before we do the test, let's copy and let's paste. And instead of just leaving it at span E, we're also going to do the R. And again, I have a different color, so we'll call this one sort of an orange. And it will get this color. Let's save that. And now let's test it real fast. And you see that now it's got the E and the R, but it's it's a little bit diminutive looking. I'd like for it to be a little bit bolder. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come over here and I'm also going to give it a font weight. Let's use 600, which is the, the boldest, uh, the heaviest font weight that we have in this type face. Let's come down here and do the same thing. So save that and uh, let's hit refresh. And you see that this is a bit bit heavier now and easier to see okay so uh, so that's how we can style this so that it's unique and now it'd be nice to get something so that on hover the background changes because right now we have no hovers so let's go ahead and jump back over here and uh, what we want to do is on the normal a we can get rid of this uh, color of the text on the normal a we can change it so that uh, we have a background hover state copy that. We don't have to sp target spans or anything for this. So we're going to say A, hover. And this is where we're going to say background. And let's just say that it's going to change the background to white now that our letters are these blue and orange colors. Let's save it and we can test that now. And you see that turns white. So we're all good. And it looks like the, the line height isn't quite right. That's something else that I probably want to go ahead and adjust really quick. All right, so I'm going to come back to my CSS. And I'm going to look up here where it says H1. And right now I've got a height of 2.3. Well, for first thing, I'm, I'm going to look and see, did I actually set a height for my nav? And I didn't. Um, I'm, I think I want to go ahead and set a height for the nav because then that way anything that I have 100% height set on, it will at least be able to find an ancestor who has its height set. So I'm going to go ahead first and I'm going to set a height here. And I think that 2.3 M is too small. I think I'm going to try 2.5 and we'll see how that looks. Before I even adjust this, we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to go here and refresh my page. And I see what happened is that it makes it a little bit taller. And I think I like it a little bit taller, but that still doesn't affect the fact that we have these words that are kind of too high up in the container. In fact, it sort of made it worse, but I think I like this height better. So to get this to match, what I need to do is I need to, first of all, tell the H1 to be the same height. And then I need to adjust the line height. And I don't think I have a line height set yet. And this is one of those things that you just learn over time whenever you do this enough. But this is something I'll just tell you right off the bat. It's easy if you just kind of always make it a rule to take care of this. It'll help you whenever you've got stuff in a horizontal line and you're trying to make sure that the text is always absolutely centered vertically. Um, the right way to do it is to adjust the height and the line height and make them typically match. So if I have a height up here of 2.5 in the parent container of nav top. Well, the H1 is a descendant of it, so I want to say that that is going to be the same as well. First of all, before we adjust to line height, let's just save that and see how that adjusted. And you see it makes that, that space go away, so that's good. So now they're matching heights. So now what I think I need to do is I want to just copy this. And down on the next line, I'm going to type in, instead of just height, I'm going to type in line dash height. And I'm going to make the line height match the height. We're going to save that. And we're going to test it out if I can find the browser. And you see that started to center it better. So I think I like that. Now, I need to take care of my unordered list over here with the list items. And I think that these buttons are a little bit too big. I don't really like them that large. So let's go find the list items down below. It's right here for this rule. And I think. Where it says height 100%, I'll just leave that there. That's fine. But I want to go ahead and I want to change the font size. Okay, and I'm going to change it to like say 0.8m. 
and I think that that's going to be a pretty good size. I'll double check it though and go back here, refresh. And I think I like that size better for the links. Now we need to get it, we need to get them further down. And if you want to see kind of what's going on, you can inspect the element. And you see that if I hover over the list item, the list item, you can see how much space it's actually taking up. So I kind of need to set the height on this. So let's take a let's take a peek over here and we're gonna set the height. Or I shouldn't say height, I should say line height because we already have the height set at 100%. So we'll, we'll set the line height. Let's try it at, uh, let's just do 2.5M. Okay, and see how that how that fares. And that looks pretty darn good. It looks like it's still a little bit high and that is probably because of the actual size of the uh, font because it's not 100% of the size font or 1M, it's two tenths smaller, that probably means that I need to add two tenths to this 2.5, so I need to say 2.7. And we're gonna go here and we'll double check it, refresh, and then that looks centered. So we're pretty good here, all right? So now I just need to set a hover state for my, my link buttons. I've got one on the H1, but I need it for my list items. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna find this A where it says list item A. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to come down and paste it right beneath and I'm going to add the hover state to it. So it'll be hover like this and I'm going to give it a background color so that on hover it'll turn to white because right now it's sort of almost a black color. It's like that charcoal color and I'm going to now that the background's white the links are white so I have to change them so that the color of the links is now the old background color. So that would be the 333 color. So let's save that. So basically it's just going to flip and let's refresh this page. And then now you see it basically flips. And But you see we've got this issue now on these things where there's that, that line underneath. And it's not really a line, it's just the container's a lot bigger. So we need to fix that. Uh, but instead of going back to our uh, Komodo file and, you know, doing this whole back and forth thing, let's just see real quickly in the inspector if we can figure out what it is so that we don't have to keep going back and forth. I'm going to right click on one of these items and inspect the element. And if I look at the A tag, that's what's currently selected, you see that we've got display block, hide 100%, with 100%. Mm. It looks like maybe that's not the culprit. Let's look at the list item. So if I click on this list item, you see my rules over here change. And it looks like we've got height 100% and then line height. That might be the culprit. So this might not be a tall enough line height. It might need to be taller because of that. Uh, you see, if I adjust it, it starts to move. Because of that um, font size, uh, it, it might just not be working exactly as we expected. So let's try like a 3M. And if I hover, well, it's better, but that line is still there. So let's try like 3.15M. And that seems to do the trick, okay? So we can now go back and put a line height on this, uh, this list item for the top nav, okay? So that should do it for us. So let's come back here, and we're going to find where the list item is. It's right here, and we have a 2.7. Let's change that to 3.15, and we'll save that. We'll do another test. I'm going to refresh this page. Let's close this and refresh. And it's refreshing, and you see that my buttons are okay now. Now, the the thing I don't like is I don't like the space right here. And I, I remember one of the things that I set before was I told this to be a max width of 3M, I think I'm going to rethink that now. And let's go back and find that in the rule, because I don't like that all the other ones butt up next to each other, but that one leaves a black space in between. So let's go back up to the H1. It's up here. And then I had a max width of 3M. I think that I can do without that. I'm going to just cut that out. And we'll save it, and we'll test it. And I think that looks a whole lot better. Okay, and so now we've got something where it scales without too much trouble and, you know, we're, we're not doing too bad.